My name is Sandra Simpson and I live in Tauranga in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm Secretary of the Kati Kati Haiku Pathway Committee. Uh, I've been in that position since 2006. I have been editor of Haiku News, the website, since 2006. And in 2012, I co-organised the Haiku Festival Aotearoa held in Tauranga. I was taught haiku at secondary school as part of the curriculum, as children still are today, but 575. And so I wrote beautifully poetic haiku. I remember, I was terribly proud of them, because they were beautiful. Uh, they weren't about images necessarily or anything um, that, that you could pin down, uh, but they were 575, so they were haiku. And that was really all I knew about haiku. I met Catherine Mayer in 1993 uh, as I'd been commissioned to write a series of feature articles about women in our local community to mark the centenary of women in New Zealand gaining suffrage, uh, gaining the vote. We were the first country in the world to give women the vote and Catherine had not long come back from a an international haiku conference in Romania where she had delivered a paper and so she qualified as someone of interest doing something different uh, within the community and what, as part of that interview with her we got talking about haiku and it was something that I'd remembered from secondary school and she very kindly then offered to uh, read some anything I'd written and to offer advice and help me into it. She has not only been a writer and a mentor to myself and to other people, but she founded the Haiku Pathway. And it was a chance conversation with Janice Bostock, got her thinking, and the sale of her family farm coincided with that. And she's created something that's unique outside Japan. Haiku have been a way of writing poetry when I haven't had a great deal of time as I've been raising a family. I used to write longer forms of poetry, I stopped doing that some years ago because haiku just seemed to, to be what I needed to do. But when I was had very young children, they, it was something I could do in the spaces between whatever their needs were. So I could still write creatively, but pay attention to the family as well. I think the social value of haiku is the sense of community it creates. It seems that wherever you go in the world, that people aren't writing in isolation. They know other people who write haiku. They get together uh, in groups to share their poems or to discuss, critique, whatever it happens to be. And it becomes a social occasion as well as a poetic occasion. And I think that sense of community is, is very important. And haiku really seems to foster it. Another function of haiku is to make us aware of the world we live in, to that one of the keys of writing haiku is to be observational. And once you start opening yourself up to the world, you notice so much more. And it might be just something very simple, a, a leaf falling through an autumn day, a bird song, a, a patch of moss growing in a gutter in an urban environment, but the sun striking it so it's just vivid green. And it's that sort of thing that makes each day rewarding and haiku is certainly something that has motivated me to be more observational. Contemporary writers who have been influences on me um, and not necessarily in terms of my technique or, or my style or the form that I choose but just people I look to as an example of writers who have set a standard that I would like to try and attain as well. Um, Perhaps the leading one among those is John O'Connor of Christchurch in New Zealand, who writes so naturally and so beautifully. I remember re one of the first ones I read of him was in a Frog Pond edition that was an international uh, survey of uh, haiku around the world, and Cyril Childs had coordinated it in New Zealand for uh, Jim Casey, who was the editor of Frog Pond, and John wrote... Uh, had a verse accepted for that and printed in Frog Pond, and so did I, and I was so excited by that. That was in the year 2000, so I still felt like I was quite a newbie at it, 
uh, and there I was with all these other wonderful writers and that haiku of John's, dusk up to my ears in birdsong, I would still rate as one of my favourite haiku of all time. It's just magic. Um, Cyril Childs, I mentioned a moment ago, he's somebody who wasn't necessarily a prolific writer of haiku, but he was a very thoughtful person about haiku and he was always either at the end of an email or a telephone for me. Janice Bostock was there also and I could renew my acquaintance with her and of course she was just one of the, the uh, leading. Sometimes when you talk about people who are pioneers of things, it doesn't necessarily mean they were the best at them. They just blazed the trail. But Jan was somebody who was a pioneer and set a very high standard too. And um, Jim Casian is one of my uh, standard setters. You know, uh, wonderful work, experimental work, um, but again, something special too. One of the things that really keeps me connected to haiku, I mentioned the observational part of it, and that, that's a very big part of it for me, is enjoying what I see in the world around me and learning about it. Sometimes I have to come back and research about something I've seen or find out more about a particular bird or an insect or a plant or to, to make the most of it and to understand where I can go with it. One of the things that um, I always put on a list of what haiku is or what you should be doing with haiku as a guideline for other people is to use ordinary language, to use everyday language, and yet you're making a poem using very simple words. You're not using uh, complicated scientific words or necessarily multi-syllabic words. You're using simple words that everybody uses and you're making a poem out of it. And pinning those things down and getting it right and getting the words in the right order and the lines in the right order and the images right that's what I enjoy.